All right, everyone, welcome back to the greatest podcast you've never heard of just yet. This is the State of the Nerd Union. I am the man named Nips, the man of a thousand opinions. Tonight, joining me is good old Trevor Law, the only person I know in support of Galactic Empire reform. And Kenneth Ship, <laughs> well, there's just nothing interesting about him. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Zach. Uh, may the Emperor live forever. Okay, but I didn't, didn't know that's what you meant by galactic reform. That's kind of sick. <laughs> Face lightning, man. <laughs> I'm just bacon. saying, he's the only guy who supports the Empire. Well, let's move on to our real topic. We're not talking about Star Wars tonight <laughs> because we talk about Star Wars every night. Tonight we're talking about <laughs> X-Men. Yeah, we are. And not just X-Men, all the X-Men. Most importantly, oh, let me just put a warning out there in case, you know, for some reason you have stumbled onto a podcast that you're not sure of. This is a nerd podcast about X Men Days of Future Past. So there will be spoilers all throughout. And for some reason, if you're listening to this podcast and you've not seen X Men Days of Future Past, then you need to get off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is not I mean, the podcast you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, we're probably even going to spoil stuff for, for X Men Apocalypse for you. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Yeah. So you should you should not not be here if you don't like spoilers. Then again, that's a big if. If somehow you stumbled upon our podcast that Kenny has actually finally put on the internet. So ouch! Wow. <laughs> hey, we're solid. Something now, a lot so. of towards towards Kenny now. Zach. Yeah. Well, Kyle's not here. <laughs> <laughs> we could just blame everything on Kyle, <laughs> and then we'll have a X-Men running 3? gag for the next video. Yeah. X Men Three, <laughs> totally Kyle's fault. He casted yeah, Brett Ratner is. and everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving on. It was Kyle's fault. We'll, we'll get back to X Men 3. We'll talk about how Kyle ruined the entire X Men franchise. And by the grace and of God. And Wolverine Origins. And Wolverine Origins. And by the grace of God, Brian Singer brought it back. <laughs> but first off, let's talk about the movie just came out X Men Days of Future Past. I've already seen it twice. Let's do some general impressions. Trevor, what'd you think? Um, I really liked it. I, I was going into this movie very skeptical. The X-Men franchise had burned me very thoroughly. Um, I am not a huge Brian Singer fan, uh, uh, but I was completely blown away and proven wrong. Um, phenomenal movie, phenomenal casting, phenomenal use of the original storyline, uh, a very good mix of action, fantastic pacing. Literally, the only two thing, two problems I have with the movie, and these are minor. I cannot stress enough; these are minor. Um, is I do not like the direction they have taken Mystique's character. I feel like making her. I feel like making her a more morally ambiguous character. Uh, betrays sort of the soul of her, which is she is she is a, a typically a villain who occasionally works for the X Men or works with the X Men. But well, typically beyond that, when she works with the X Men, it's to a point of her own gain. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing all there, and this is the first incarnation of her being, you know, a decent human being. Uh, and in the original X Men franchise, there was no hint of that at all. There was no hint of any past relationship with Xavier. No, nothing. Um, and and honestly, a lot of this isn't even... I can't even blame Brian Singer for the, the way Mystique is in this movie. Because he didn't do the X-Men First Class, did he? No, Matthew Vaughn, who was actually originally supposed to direct X-Men The Last Stand after Brian, after Brian Singer left, directed X-Men yeah. First Class. And then he dropped out of The Last Stand the last second, and they brought Kyle yeah. Nelson on to direct it, and he <laughs> ruined it. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, so Brian Singer, he sees what what new guy I, I've already forgotten his name Matthew does Vaughan. with Mystique, and so he uses her to the best of his ability. So even this, in my opinion, misuse of Mystique was put to very good use. Uh, the other thing is the is Magneto's attempted saving of JFK. Uh, it was a little thing. It felt it, it felt a little weird. It was like really forced. Yeah. It, yeah, it was really weird, and it was really forced. Um, and I could go into a, other like little time travel problems I have with it, but they're I mean they're even minor than the ones I've already brought up. But then the quote looper at that point, we're going to be sitting here drawing diagrams, and we'll be discussing time travel all day. 
Yes. So, and I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Trevor. Well, I want to. <laughs> talking about Mystique, yeah. I actually found it. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge X Men fan. I've read most of the entire history of the comics, like from 1975 on, ever since Claremont started writing them. Honestly, I was really intrigued by the improvement of Mystique as a character because honestly, just a full on I'm evil character is just boring, one dimensional. And cliche. I don't. It, to me, it's more interesting of her actually having more of a soul and having a good nature, and watching her go back and forth between the two and struggling with some moral ambiguity. It's just more interesting to me as a character. It's she's more interesting in that movie than I've ever actually seen Mystique before. And okay. then the uh, the bullet thing. I don't know. It, yeah, it's just kind of tossing there. Like, hey, we never answered how that bullet bounced around inside JFK. Magneto. Let's throw it in there. Okay. <laughs> I mean, truly, it's just a plot device just to set up Quicksilver saving them. Yep. And I'm okay with it. It's it's kind of just thrown in there. I mean, there he. I, I didn't think, though, it was needed. I don't think his arrest was necessary. Like, that excuse was necessary, though. Because what did Magneto do in the last movie? Oh, right. He attempted to destroy the Soviet and American fleets uh, off the coast of Cuba. And then he broke into a prison and started busting out mutants. Well, I mean, they had to arrest him for something, right? Well, I mean, I think attempted destruction uh, and an act of war against two superpowers is enough to arrest somebody. Well, yeah. But, you know, that's just me. <laughs> the thing is, man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they just wanted to just tie in something like, hey, JFK, boom. Uh, that being said, their use of, of actual historical events, particularly the Paris Peace Conference, uh, and sort of the, the, the rise and hinting of the military-industrial complex in the 60s and 70s by way of Boulevard Trask, were excellent. Um, just absolutely excellent uses of it. I did um, love that moment when he walked into the, uh, the peace room, or the, the peace conference, before it started, mm -hmm. and he walked in, he's like, hey... Congrats on winning this war. Let's, let's talk money. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because that's, that's what people in the military-industrial complex did. Um, there's a reason we are now allied with Vietnam now. Because we lost and wanted to sell McDonald's there? Yes. <laughs> and sort of Boulevard Trash sort of represents that ruthless, capitalistic spirit <laughs> that, that sort of permeates a lot of American culture and society. Um, like he is, he is the, he was, he would have been a villain if X-Men was made in the eighties. Like just, he is just that he is a Wolf of Wall Street type individual. And I liked it. It was awesome. Okay. All right. Kenny, hit me with your best shot. What'd you think of the movie? Uh, fairly enjoyed it. I felt like I was a little kid again. Uh, and I mean that in the sense of, uh, cause we were talking about before we felt like, uh, some of the movies were going downhill and we're like, what are you guys producing? Like, this is, uh, board, is borderless. Some of us getting borderline crap. Uh, are we talking about just X-Men movies or comic book movies in general? Just comic book movies in general. You know, where you're getting one good one to every, like, two or three bad ones. And then Captain America came out, and I thought, oh, oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank God. And then Days of Future Past came out, <clears throat> and that's why I get the little kid expression, because it really felt like, it really felt like that. They're watching a really good Saturday morning cartoon that your free parter came all together in one one Saturday. Uh, so my yeah, like Trevor, my complaints are really small. Um, I would have liked a little bit more of a better Sentinel battle in the past, but I know the team was broken up, so we didn't really get that. Uh, but things I really it liked was a, the X Men in the past was essentially just Xavier, Beast, and Wolverine. That was it. Yeah. So they yeah. Didn't, they didn't have a force to fight. So I mean, I I got that. And just they having a full scale fight and knowing they could have beat the Sentinels as compared to the darker timeline where we're just getting massacred and there's no chance of you're only stalling for time. You're not going to be able to beat these I things. Mean, it was absolutely horrifying that Magneto and Storm went all out on a very large Sentinel attack force and barely slowed it down. Yeah, yep. Um, that's that is horrifying. And then both pay the price afterwards. They both, yeah, yeah they, both they, get brutally murdered. <laughs> it sucks. Oh, I I'm not. I knew took a chunk to the chest, and he he survived for a while. I don't know if he like got obliterated, but Storm got taken out fast. 
Yes, she did. I swear it's like they Gosh. knew they needed to go take those two out in particular. It's like they I took mean, those yeah. two out first, so then it's <laughs> ah crap. Um, but yeah, uh, the tone in the movie was great. Again, the JFK thing was a little weird. I didn't mind it. It's just you know if they'd overstressed it, I think I probably would been like that's stupid. It was just well, really it was just kind of like a throwaway. It was like eh, JFK. Yeah, it was just uh, so it was okay. Um, uh, other than that. And the time travel, I really have to give kudos because it really could have been convoluted. And I'm going to take a second to defend the movie from the the people that are attacking it online, trying to say there's plot holes. There are potential plot holes. Like if you want to talk about Xavier's powers and being transferred in the body, how does that work? How does he keep his powers? Although really, if you pay attention to the movie, there, he may have never actually used his powers. The old Xavier. Young Xavier was using his powers to search back into the past and all... All old Xavier did was talk to him. We don't know that he actually used his powers. Uh, and we know he transferred bodies, so we don't know how that works. Uh, some people were saying that the time travels possibly couldn't have worked. I'll, I'm not going to go into a rant on that here. If you want to talk to me later, we can do that. Uh, but let's just, it's solid. There's not a lot of... I just bring up the n- that if you're into the theories of time travel, a ridiculous theoretical concept about how it can or cannot work, you yeah. really need to do something else with your time, bro. It's just a movie. <laughs> it's just a movie. Calm down. But the rules they present in the movie work for the movie. I can accept the rules they made for the movie, and they don't break the rules they made in the movie. So what else can I ask for? That's solid to me. And then there you go. Uh, I'm really excited about what's going to come next. If you want to go ahead and transition to Age of Apocalypse, like that's going to be awesome. To your Mystique comment, though, I wonder if the next series of movies are going to just throw things at them that are just so huge and so large that they don't have a choice but to work together. Like, they're going to ring off a couple movies, like one or two, where they just, like, Mystique would have no choice but to join with them, or else it's going to be, uh, like, another extinction level event for mutants. There is that question of escalation. You know, because this last movie was ginormous. We know what the next movie is going to yes. be. It's. It's going to be ginormous. At what point do you follow up Apocalypse? Like, what do you follow that with? Um, I mean, I think there's only one thing you do follow up Apocalypse with, and that is the resolution of the Xavier Magneto debate. Mm. Uh, that's the only. I think that's the only thing you can end it with. That's the way you would have to end sort of that particular incarnation of the franchise on because we need to see uh i mean the only other thing i I could see them doing is some kind of genosha storyline uh but i mean they've already dealt with the sentinels so how do you i'm not so i I think the only real place to go after apocalypse is the end one way or another with with new magneto become yes Yes, but this will be like, I mean, one it'll be better as long as Singer's doing it. It it will not be as bad as as Last Stand. It, it Assuming he's a, he doesn't go to jail. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's a very real possibility, and that is actually something we should bring up. Uh, I'm glad you. Uh, we'll get back to that. Let's stay on Days of Future Past. <laughs> okay. When we get back to the future of the franchise, we'll come back okay. to the allegations and what we're afraid of and all that. All of that. Kenny, any other major thoughts on DOFP, how awesome it was, and all the internet haters? Uh, not much. I mean, it was, it's solid. If anyone is like absolutely rejecting this movie, just straight out on principle because of X-Men, they're silly. Uh, you need to give it a chance. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes probably has it right at where it should be at. Whatever it's like 93% movie. right now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, me, little kid in a candy store. I mean, I grew up on X-Men cartoons. Like, that was my Saturday mornings. Me, my dad, my brother, my sister, sitting there watching X-Men, the animated series that started in, like, 93, 92, 94, somewhere in that range. I mean, this was like, you know, me and my dad and my sister went to go see it the other day. And I I had to pee twice, not from an overall volume inside my (laughs) bladder, but from sheer excitement. So that's, that's how excited I was during this movie. I did a cartwheel outside the theater. It was just deliciously good. 
I mean, from start to finish, one thing I love is that they rebooted the franchise to where we can just tell new stories all over again. Why? Because I absolutely love the characters of Cyclops and Jean Grey, and I'd love to see them again, and not in the same stories. I'd like to see new ones, and they just did this straight-up Star Trek Eleven reboot. All those stories happened in the alternate timeline, and now we got a new time- timeline to play with. And then... I mean, from start to finish, the action scenes, epic. The scale was ginormous, like biggest scale of any action movie. All right. And we were talking earlier about the scale of this movie. Honestly, this is the biggest epic of X-Men so far that's happened on screen. Now, Phoenix Saga should have been up on this scale, but we'll talk more later about X3 and how it didn't happen. This one, the stakes were just so much higher. You generally felt a sincere amount of terror coming from this darkest timeline everything was on the line if you know, like as long as they stopped you know mystique stop magneto magneto's attack on like uh the white house all of it, just the sheer epicness that was going on at the end of the movie very like all enthralling and encompassing just wrapped me up like i was just could not take my eyes off the screen yes you know, where, uh, uh, it, it felt like watching a beautiful nightmare yes. <laughs> just something that was just so horrendously bad. The final 30 minutes of that movie in DC are just astronomically good. Yeah. Um, just astronomically good. And the two major characters that I love the most throughout this movie and what they did with them was first off Wolverine. Because, I mean, typically so far in this franchise, they've, they've made it all about Wolverine. I mean, and that's that's been some good, some bad. He is the most popular X Men. He's the most, you know, unfan friendly X Men. Everybody knows who Wolverine is. Everyone knows about yeah. the claws, the snick snick, stabby stabby. Everyone knows who Wolverine is. However, you truly get a sense if you compare this one to X Men One about the growth and change of the character over the years. Whenever he goes back and he becomes the professor, and I, I say that you know, as in he becomes that mentor role to lead the professor on in becoming the man that he's gonna be. Yeah. That you truly see a sense of growth in this character who never ages, but has changed. And it's just, to me, you compare it to X-Men 1 and the person that he was then, that's what a story should do. You should see a true, honest growth of the character and the amount of change that Wolverine has gone through over these years, especially through all the wars, mutant wars more than anything, more than he's changed for any of the actual wars that have existed in true human uh, history. That to me is just fascinating to watch him be that guy to lead the X-Men and get them back together. The other character who I was just completely enthralled with was Magneto. In that, if you look in the old series, yeah, he's, he's a bad guy, number one. He's like, I want to make everyone mutants. You know, eh, I might kill him, I might not. <laughs> then X-Men 2, he's like, I'm going to kill every human on Earth. Even still, with Ian McKellen's performance, you're still kind of like, he's so charismatic and enigmatic that I'm still just kind of with that guy. I'm like, eh, they were trying to kill everybody. So, I mean, even though I'm a human, just go and kill them all. It's okay. <laughs> and then it, we won't talk about X3. And then first class, he's really just kind of on that line. Like, Michael Fassbender does such a great job with that character. I'm still rooting for him at the end. I'm like, go ahead and blow those ships up. Dude, do it. You're Go for it, man. They've been screwing you guys over the whole time. Finally in this movie, 100%. I am against Magneto. I'm like, uh, maybe this isn't such a good idea, you know, launching the Sentinels at the White House. And, and it wasn't just that. He uh, His uh, immediate knee-jerk reaction at the Paris Peace Conference was, oh, Mystique causes the end of the world. We should I see. see. I'll, I'll just kill her then, and yeah. that'll solve the problem. Um, just that that very brutal, cold, calculating mindset uh, when you see that sort of compared to Xavier for all of his flaws and, and warts, you see fundamentally the big difference between them has become not so much uh, it should humanity coexist with mutants or not, but it's more uh, uh, should we find a peaceful solution or not? Because you feel like in this particular this particular Magneto, doesn't want to kill all of humanity. He wants to rule it. Which is actually uh, more in line with the uh, character from the books. He Rarely, yes. only during the um, Grant Morrison series, does he try to really start killing off everyone. More importantly, he wants mutant superiority 
of us to dominate the ser- you know the entire planet instead of genocide, which is I think it would be more in line with the character for him not to, to look towards genocide, considering the fact that you know him being a Jew in a con- concentration camp, he's seen that. Yeah. So mutants ruling supreme over humans seems to be more in line with the uh, the character historically, at least. I I totally agree. I absolutely totally agree. And 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 going back to talking about how you're root, you were rooting for Magneto through most of the movies, most of the freaking franchise up until this one. Uh, I think another part of it was that in uh, dealing with the humans of the original X Men trilogy and First Class, you got a very real sense of unreasonableness from the humans. True. Uh, this notion that well, mutants are dangerous we need to relegate them to second class citizenship for our protection because they are so dangerous um but in x-men but in days of future past uh you get a notion that the humans are just terrified they are dealing with something that that was never that they never could have conceived of uh even when Bolivar trask is talking to richard nixon the very definition of ruthless pragmatism you get the sense that uh, that Nixon is not uh, his knee jerk reaction isn't well let's let's kill or oppress these people. It's they don't like they're such a small portion of the population, and I'm dealing with the Soviet Union and Vietnam. Why why should I divert valuable resources to something that isn't a threat? And even Nixon's reaction is it's not we've got to take these people out. It's we've got yeah. to show the American people that we're still strong. We're still undivided. We're still. We're still America. We can take care of our own, even though we just lost a giant war. Yeah, we'll build these Sentinels, and everything's going to be okay. It's not. We're going to build these Sentinels and kill all the mutants. Yes, he he wanted the Sentinels not as a as an attack program, but as a defense against people like Magneto. Which, frankly, if Magneto was running around and I was in the U.S. government, or or I was just a normal human who was a U.S. citizen, I would want something like the Sentinel program. Make yeah. me sleep better at night. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I, I really very much appreciated that level of nuance that was just so glaringly absent from the other X Men movies. Hmm. Days of Future Past was awesome. Gosh, yes, it was. I might go see it tomorrow. Nope, the next day. <laughs> see it for a third time. That ain't no good. It is. I'll go for a third time. Oh, Both boy. times. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So, uh, Kenny, do you have anything to add? You've been with me and Zach have sort no, of been counting out. Just, you just dominated it. Yeah, you just pushed me out to like a second class citizen. Yeah. Now I'm ready for the well, next. Well, we thing. gotta make a Kyle out of someone here. <laughs> ah, okay. I thought we were making a Kyle uh, out of Kyle. Oh, that's true. Kenny, do we want to do we want to take a quick break and? And come back, or, or do you want to just move on to Age of Apocalypse? Well, I'd rather discuss the original trilogy first, and we'll come back to Apocalypse. All right, all right. So he wants to do past we'll and about future. All right, X Men one, two, and three, and then we can discuss how you know they all didn't happen. Yes, <laughs> or or they are they exist now as an alternate timeline, but yeah, they they didn't happen. Yeah. So X Men One, okay. Let's talk about X Men One. Okay. Movie came out in I think two thousand and one. It was the mm-hmm. first major budget uh, superhero movie since. Oh, Blade came out. You know, a year before that or a year or two. But honestly, no one really, no yeah. one really knew Blade was a comic book character. It was just, it's Wesley Snipes killing vampires. Everyone's mm-hmm. down. It's cool. Yeah. X Men though was probably the first major. Uh, first major Marvel character in a big budget movie. And it was the first comic book movie in a major production outside of blade since the 1997 travesty of Batman and Robin. Yeah. (laughs) Clearly they took some notes from how that movie went down and went in the opposite direction. And they went for a very gritty, realistic feel. Yep. With a lot of S and M black leather. (laughs) Which is what it I is. I mean, you can never get too much of that, honestly. Apparently not. 
I mean, there's a lot of black leather in that movie, but you know, that's, that's, that's part of the movie itself is that they're going for what's real. Well, you know, what's, what, how would people really behave, you know, if, if mutants were out there? How terrified would they be? Um, you know, clearly the opposite direction of 97 Batman and Robin, which was surrealism toy commercial. And then, you know, instead of having people run around John Schumacher cops, having a... Uh, uh, uh. I'm not sure what that sound was. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was, but I didn't like it what at if all. You you're, not, you're not supposed right. to like it. <laughs> no one's supposed anyway. to like that face and that noise. Yeah, because oh, yeah, I forgot a video, video chat. <laughs> yeah, way to go there, recorder. Anyway, we get back to X-Men. X-Men yeah, 1. X-Men 1, go ahead. It was good when it came out. Everyone was like... Hey, look! There's potential. There's you know superhero movies, and I went back and watched it last week, and it's okay, but it does not hold up at all. No, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. It, it feels is. very dated. Um, the characters are they're not two dimensional, but they I can't call them fleshed out either. No, I mean Logan really is just the whole. I'm angry, Wolverine guy. No, that's mm-hmm. that's just how he's, I mean, that's where he's supposed to start out at, but he doesn't really move beyond it. Cyclops is just the well. I'm the leader I, of the team, and I just don't have much to do other than stay away from my girl. And, and yeah, and I, I got a big stick up my butt the whole time. Yeah, wait, wait, Jean, really, really, yeah, Jean, out Cyclops there. Yeah, Jean Grey is is just I'm pretty, and I I'm here, and I'm part of a love triangle. So I guess that's cool. And Halle Berry is like, well, um, we need a black person in this movie. Y- yes, uh, I, I under. I oh, know that was. Yeah, that was somebody. Oh, we we need to throw Storm in here. So let's let's get Halle Berry and give her a few roles, and and she'll 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 just be there. And Xavier's just rolling around a wheelchair. I mean, let's be honest. When it came out, yeah, it fills up with a whole bunch of new hope. You know, new X Men movies, Marvel movies, they're gonna be good and. And it led to great things, but you go back and watch X Men One now, and you can just see it plain as day. It's bare budget, barely an action movie. I mean, there's like one or two action scenes, and they're really not even that great. Nope. Kenny, you know what they kicked Magneto off of the uh, the, tr- the was it the uh, mutant machine? They have a fight in the subway, where uh, Magneto's going to get Rogue. And uh, mm-hmm. Scott misses. That wasn't even a fight to... in the subway, though. On the train station, pretty yeah. much all it is is uh, saying, like, they take Cyclops' it's... you know visor off, he shoots the laser, storm or no saber tooth chokes a bitch, and mm-hmm. then uh, Magneto just picks up Wolverine and tosses him. And that's it. Yeah, and now he does the cool gun thing, which is always cool to see. Yeah, that is cool. You can tell it's like half their budget one right there. Like even <laughs> even more than what's been on the end of the movie on their fake yeah. little Statue of Liberty set, which was rinky dink. That they're like, hey, let's lift these cars in the air and then drop them on each other. That's where half the budget went. Yeah, gosh. But well, you got to start somewhere. That's, you I, do. I do. I, I, I'm agreeing. You know, it was good for when it came out, but you look at everything that it actually led to and inspired and opened the door for. Mm-hmm. You go back and watch it now. It's not as enjoyable. Okay. Agreed. I'm trying to think of something that would be be a good comparison for, but I can't. Nothing's coming to mind. Um, yeah. No. So I, let, let's let's uh, move on to X2 then. Let's go back to X2. Yeah. It nailed it. And since uh, you're not talking much, you want to talk about X2? Yeah. Yeah. X2 nailed it. Uh, I remember when I was first seeing that when I was a kid, and. Uh, just being really blown away uh if because if you didn't get hooked by x1 you got hooked by x2 uh and i remember that one and regardless of what you guys think of spider-man 2 those two movies for me like i was sold on comic movies until the recent some of the recent flubs but for those two when those two came out i was all right and it showed us that a uh an ensemble cast really can be handled and managed and worked and you can find a good balance of uh growing your character's with that movie, there's some that kind of got a little shortchanged. Uh, I have to go back. Uh, I haven't rewatched X2 recently. I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, Cyclops kind of got pushed off to the side. What he had two. He's scenes. barely in the movie again. Yeah. 
Cyclops and Storm both got really pushed off to the side, and I, I feel like all through all of the X Men movies, yeah. honestly, she's got, Storm's got a decent enough role in X Two. I mean, she's you know kind of leading the uh, the school whenever Xavier gets you know kidnapped. Her and Jean are off finding Nightcrawler, and then she's kind of alongside leading all of them. Once again, I mean, the movie is dominated by Wolverine, of course. Mm-hmm. But really, Which, Cyclops has one or two scenes in the movie. I mean, he's in the beginning, he gets kidnapped, and then he's brainwashed, and then he cries. Yeah. Which brings me to my second big... I, I do like X-Men too, and I don't want to make it seem like I, I'm going to trash the movie. No, but... but this does bring me to my second biggest complaint of the entire X-Men saga. I now hate Wolverine. I cannot stand him. I want him dead. I want him gone. I don't want him in the franchise anymore. Really? Uh, Because he so thoroughly dominates it that I don't get a chance to enjoy any other character. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it is, it's, uh, it's almost like I'm reading the Wolverine comics and everybody is just a supporting character. The only movie that I, the only two movies that I felt like that he was not the main character have been the the X Men rebooted movies, um, and so I I have I really don't <laughs> like him anymore. I used to like him, but I want I want to actually spend time on these other very interesting characters. Uh, I just read Astonishing X Men the other day, and that made me wait. The really Josh Whedon version or the later yes, version? The twenty-five the Josh issues. Whedon, the Josh Whedon version. They are amazing. Yes, and that's that the made greatest X Men story ever. And that made me really angry that I didn't get to spend more time with Cyclops. Mm. Cyclops that's is actually a fascinating character in the books. He's yes, awesome. He is the number one. X-Men. He has been put in yeah. charge to lead them in the team, and then once everybody finds out how much of a douchebag a Professor X is, he leads them on. And yes. he makes a new mission. Once they're all battling extinction post-M Day, he is the so- he is the general of the army. Even yeah. Wolverine bows to him and says, you're in charge. I'm the number one soldier, but you're the general. And and that that has been something that I... I once again, going back a little bit, uh, why I, for the first time in a long time, I actually enjoyed Wolverine on the <laughs> screen for two reasons. He was put in a situation to where he is woefully unqualified for, that he is, in fact, the worst possible sit person you could have in such a situation. Um, is everybody still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. And and so you've got that, and then you've got him, what Zach said earlier, mentoring people, uh, being forced to be a role model towards characters who we've never seen needed a role model. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a nice, it was a brilliant so, reversal. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so, but beyond that, I've grown to hate him. <laughs> Hey, uh, and, so I know Confused Matthews hates uh, the Marvel uh, setup of having different information in different movies and that when you come together to watch the Avengers, it helps having all that information together to watch the Avengers. But do you think Wolverine mm-hmm. would have been benefited? Like, so if you go back to X2, even if you still use the Striker model to push that movie along, like he's doing an experiment or he wants to run that Cerebro machine to kill the mutants, if you still have that story as the as the thread of that main movie... Would it have helped back then to have had a Wolverine movie already so that you can pull some of that stuff out and Wolverine's having flashbacks during the movie, but him trying to figure out what he where he's from is like he's already kind of gotten that from that other movie. You think that would have helped out back then? No. Why no, not? No, no. No. Because half the most interesting facets of Wolverine's character up until the last ten years has been mystery. Of uh, the fact that, you know, in the comics, Wolverine didn't have amnesia. Wolverine had memories that he wasn't sure were real or not because he had implanted memories that he found out about. So not everything he re- remembers is true. So a lot of the interesting parts of Wolverine is mystery. Now, what happens about when the mystery of the Force is explained through midichlorians? 
No one cares. Yep. Once you're explained everything, it's not as interesting anymore. The you know the sum of its parts are not equal to its whole. Mystery is what's most important for that character. And there's another issue with X Men Wolver- Origins Wolverine. Thanks a lot for ruining that. <laughs> um, but to you know to sit there and be like being told all these pieces of information as Wolverine's going along trying to figure it out for himself. I think it's more identifiable for that character to be like, well, I don't know what's going on, and Wolverine doesn't know what's going on. So you're there with the character finding out alongside the way instead of being told beforehand and be like, why don't you know this? Didn't you see the movie? But should that have been done in the X-Men movies? No. I I agree with with Zach. The – one of the few, one of the draws of Wolverine is that he is this mysterious soldier that comes out of nowhere and starts killing people. That's that is that is part of his charm, if you will. Uh, and if you have a movie that sets up the fact that he is this mystery, and then part of his interactions with new characters are, oh, he's so mysterious. Uh, it it, ju- it takes it away. It takes it away from the audience because we know we know that we know the mystery. Uh, so. Mm. so going back to X2, because I never get to express my opinion on it, right. I still maintain right now that it is the best X-Men movie. I don't want to put Days of Future Past on top, because I like to give it several years before a movie comes out, before saying it's the best movie ever. You know, Dark Knight, I waited until Dark Knight Rises came out before I said that's the best comic book movie ever. I want to give it some time, because you know it's still new, it's still fresh. But X2... I'll still maintain right now is the best X Men movie yet. Um, mainly, yeah, I'm okay. But... Once again, we're talking about scope, scale. I mean, the entire human race is on is on the line right there at the end of the movie, where Xavier's almost killing all of them. I mean, some of my favorite characters are relegated to side roles, but then again, that's a part of the fact that it's such a larger cast because they have all, the X Men themselves with the addition of Nightcrawler, and oh my god, one of the best opening scenes I've ever seen in a movie. With yeah. The, him waylaying through the White House. That which, was awesome. Yep. Which I'm glad Singer was able to top with the... Uh... Oh, that's a great question. Which scene did you like better? Just a, like a quick side question. The uh, Nightcrawler scene in X2 or a Quicksilver scene in Days of Future Past? <laughs> now, there's diff- like two different styles of, of, of uh, that, scenes, though. Like, I know, I know. But yeah. Nightcrawler was more of just a... Terrifying. Yeah, it was a terrifying action piece of pure adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Quicksilver's scene was exactly the opposite. There's nothing as fast paced as he was moving. You didn't feel any risk to him whatsoever. Like there was nothing that was going to stop Quicksilver. And it was more just the enjoyment of watching him run to that music in the background and the yeah. laughter of what he does. Nor did I feel any risk to anyone else, which is another thing, because Nightcrawler. I think he might have actually killed people in in his attempted assassination on the president. Quite Whereas possible. it was obvious uh, Quicksilver was just having fun. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, it's sort of comparing apples to oranges. Um, once again, like I was saying, X2, one of the greatest opening scenes. Um, huge scale, the entire human race is at stake. The interesting aspect of watching Magneto and Mystique work alongside the rest of the mutants for the same cause of stopping their own extinction. There's a lot more, uh, like we were talking about earlier, Wolverine's mystery. Some of those doors finally get opened up. You can find out a little bit of the pieces of information for the, the common viewer who does not you know, know the entire history of Wolverine. And then it just starts to open up facets of his character. You see some growth with him where he actually makes a choice at the end. He's like, I would rather not know who I am and go with these mutants then find out who I am and stick around with you, Striker. And then, honestly, the ending, just the tease. The tease of the ending just makes it a thousand times greater for me. Just watching the flames rise up around Jean Grey as she's stopping the water hitting the plane, and that one moment at the end of the movie with the phoenix soaring over the water and you just see the reflection, that right there, just it's, it's like the end of Batman Begins where he just turns the card over, and you just have that spine-tingling moment of nerdgasm <laughs> where you're like, oh my god, they're doing the Phoenix Saga. And we'll talk about it in a few minutes about, you know, the comparison of teasing to expectations to reality and what the shortcomings of what we're getting. That moment, though, still holds on. And through all the movies, that was one of my favorite. 
years of like, oh my God, she's turning into the Phoenix. Even now, and it's been how many years? 10, 12 years? 10 years, I think, since X-Men 2? 11? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It's been at least yeah, a decade. It's 2003. And it's so, yeah. Still holds that moment of like, oh my God. So X2, I still say, best X-Men movie yet. Even though some of my favorite characters get shortcomings, they don't get to spend as much time on screen. They were used elsewhere. We got Nightcrawler, awesome action sequences, giant scale, advancement in the character's development on, all, on, on many fronts between not only Jean Grey, Wolverine, Magneto, Iceman, Rogue, all around great time. All right. Anything else? I think that's it on X2. No, I mean, yeah, I think that pretty much hits the nail on the head. All right. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. What's quite possibly the greatest (laughs) X-Men movie of all time. And I say that with every bit of sarcasm that Bill Murray has ever put in any one of his movies. (laughs) X-Men. Obviously not the last stand. Yeah. (sighs) Who wants to start on that one first? I, 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 unless Kenny wants to, I'm willing to. I'll, I'll start since I haven't been talking a whole lot. Um, all right, Kenny, boldly go. We have all gone before so many a times. <laughs> <laughs> this one really, like, just like my ex girlfriend. Oh boy. Uh, this trailers looked awesome. You're walking into the theater, and I didn't realize how much of a turd bucket this movie was until I walked out and really thought about it. Like, I'll, I'll give it credit. When I first watched it, I enjoyed it. I was like, oh, okay, great. Oh, oh my God, I can't believe they did that for, to Professor X, but oh, whatever. And then I sat home and really thought about it. I was like, this is bad. Why did you do this? Why did you think any of this was a good idea? Uh, so I've never never fairly been so uh, slapped in the face until that one came out. Uh, and just to piss away Jean Grey like that, Killing uh, Cyclops off screen. Uh, I mean, the Xavier death should have been cool. I mean, the idea of was kind of kind of cool, and the way they pulled it off with the, with the CGI up to that point was uh, was cool. But looking back on it, it's like no, no. And then you just box yourself into a corner uh, for future movies. Like we w- sh- we shouldn't have had to have had a uh, Days of Future Past to fix everything. You shouldn't have wrote yourself into a corner with uh, Last Stand. And uh, I sort of want to talk about because I, I'm I'm with Kenny on it because the first time I saw that movie I loved it I thought it was awesome I thought it was great uh, and it wasn't until I watched it a second time that I understood how much of a moron I was being. Um, it, it does ride him into a hole, uh, and it's not just that they kill Professor X. It's not just that they ruin the Phoenix. Uh, it's not just that they completely ride off Rogue and completely ignore somebody who had been a main character up to that point. Um, it's that they do all of them at once, and it's that they do them for no particular reason. Uh, Xavier dies doing something that's completely out of character. Uh, he shows arrogance for the first time in the freaking franchise. Uh, he is. An, he shows. He ta- suddenly turns into an individual that can do no wrong. That always knows exactly what he's doing, and that does not need to have anybody tell him that what he's doing could even be remotely incorrect. Uh, and then he dies uh, for some reason. Uh, okay. You've got well to be the third guy in the room. The third time to say it. The first time I saw it, yeah, I came out and being like, oh my God, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, a couple of years later, like, this isn't as good as I thought it was. But I'll be that guy who really, um, to be quite honest, I can still watch it and there is, I can still enjoy it. There's, you know, it's for an hour and 45 minutes, it's kind of like, it's a, you know, I'll sit and turn it on. It's still better than a Michael Bay movie. You know, uh-huh. that's true. Still, yeah. Still better than a lot of movies that are out there right now. Still better than Amazing Spider-Man 2. But oh, I, oh, 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 that's true. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? But, uh, you know what? There are I agree. A lot of I agree. Things I have problems with. There are a lot of things I have problems with. Um, to be a few positives of the movie, honestly, the CG 
the CG was kind of cool of her ripping apart just to show the the, the amazing abilities of her telepathic uh, cap- or telekinetic at that point capabilities of how she can rip it apart piece by piece down to the microscopic level. Um, Beast Kelsey Grammer. Thank that was you. that was a really good casting. Thank you, Kelsey Grammer, for your performance as Beast. Best thing in that movie. Oh, um, oh, god. I- Oh, yes, absolutely. I hope he comes back. I, I want to see him. I don't care how they do it, but I want to I want to get Kelsey Grammer's Beast back in that franchise. They did. It's a future past. It happened. Well, yeah, for like three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's about as much enjoyability as X-Men Last Stand has. Boom! Anyway. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from the guy who's defending the movie, too. Anyway, uh, Kelsey Grammer's Beast. Um, really? The, the biggest problem I had with that movie is the throwaways of Phoenix Saga, and it's it's obvious because I mean, she comes back and they. I mean, I can understand her killing off Cyclops for one thing. If you want to be like, this is how uncontrollable she is. She killed off her lover, her her husband. I believe they're married in the movies. Um, mm-hmm. but they do it off screen, and then afterwards, she's just kind of like the personification they give her is she for the most part just sits back with crazy face and never really talks. So she's just kind of like that thing in the background of like, this is my weapon. She's not a weapon. She's the most interesting character, or at least should be the most interesting character in the movie. She just mm-hmm. came back from the dead and is the omnipowerful, most like ridiculous mutant in the entire plane of existence. Yet she's relegated to just being in the background of one of uh, Magneto's chess pieces. Because once again, yes. he's pissed off. And then you get a, the backwards... Uh, falling of the scale of the movie the last x-men 2 is like everyone on the planet is gonna die all the humans are gonna die x-men 3 is like well there's this cure and they're talking about using it and they might use it as a weapon and we're angry about that so we're gonna go and we're gonna have like a, a battle on alcatraz and uh, let's not forget that apparently the cure doesn't even fully work it just temporarily suppresses powers yeah and then we find that out at the end of the movie so the cure yep. isn't really that big of a deal because obviously he has his power first back. Um, but uh, thing about Xavier, you say that's not in his character. It's actually exactly in his character. Well, now, I, I, no, it is totally in his character in the comics, but not from the Xavier I saw in those movies. Which is the thing is that the uh, it had just been changed around in the comics, or like within the last couple of years before that movie came out, that you found mm-hmm. out two major things. One was that Xavier. Uh, erase the entire existence of Cyclops' brother from his mind. That uh, Cyclops did have a third brother named Vulcan who died trying to save Cyclops. And uh, eventually Vulcan comes back. That's the third brother. And Cyclops finds out about it. He gets pissed off. He's like, Xavier, what did you know about this? And he's like, yeah, I kind of erased it from your brain. <laughs> so everyone kind of turned on, on him at that point. And then later on, uh, Xavier is found out that he knew that the danger room had become sentient, and then the danger room kills a kid, and he just kind of you know waited around for a long time on the sideline, didn't say anything to anybody. Like, yeah, we've been pretty much keeping a sentient uh, being prisoner as our train device as a slave. Yeah, and and, and basically torturing it. And uh, you know, people got mad about that. So that's exactly what Xavier's character to be like. I don't need you to tell me what I'm doing, Wolverine. I'm gonna sit here and control her brain. That being said, though, Patrick Stewart just so damn likable that even at the end of the movie, I wasn't really, I wasn't really buying into it. It's like, really, really, no. really, really, Patrick Stewart. I'm not, I'm not buying this from you. No, I, I didn't, I did not buy that 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 this particular Xavier was comic book Xavier. Yeah. He was, he he was a uh, uh, Doctor Jean Luc Xavier, and I was perfectly fine with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was fine with it too until that happened. Yeah. And then this is the movie where they start the change of Wolverine's character into putting him into a leadership role. However, it's not done nearly as well as Age of Future Past. Like, he has that little speech at the end because, you know, he, it's, he's the last one left. You know, Cyclops is dead off screen. Xavier's kind of dead. Jean Grey is pretty much relegated to being in the background with Crazy Face. So it pretty much just falls down on Wolverine and Storm. And instead of going with the, you know, the 80s approach, which was putting Storm in charge, they went with the 2000 approach of Wolverine's in charge of the X-Men. And he has this little speech of, like, we're X-Men. We're going to stop everyone. The six of us versus 3,000 mutants. Because we're X-Men. And I'm sorry, but I I honestly think that uh, Hugh Jackman can give a better performance. 
but since Kyle Nelson was directing this film, mm-hmm. give it a good direction that uh, you got the proof needed out of Hugh Jackman to really sell that line. And honestly, even the Academy Award winning actress Halle Berry delivers some terrible lines in this movie. When mm-hmm. Wolverine's about to go off and find Jean Grey, and he's like, I've got to, and he's like, because you love her. That's I've, I've seen better acting in Sharknado. I'm sorry, Halle Berry. You can do better. Once again, we'll blame Kyle Nelson for that one. And yeah, for everyone else, just yeah. a reminder, Matthew, who was right? Brett Ratner from Rush Hour directed this movie. We're just making fun of Kyle Nelson. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. Brett Ratner. It needs, it needs to be you know, reiterated. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we're blaming Kyle Nelson, but it's really everything is Brett Ratner's fault. Cause yeah, no. He should have never been given that movie. <laughs> Because he cast Chris Tucker not once, not twice, three times, and we're going to trust this man with X Men. Oh, wait, he did the Rush Hour movies. He did the Rush Hour movies. Hey, that first Rush Hour movie is a very enjoyable film. It's a fun film. I haven't seen it since middle school. I don't remember. I, I like yeah, the it's first fun film. Too. It's a fun movie. But I mean, yeah. overall, if you numb your brain down for two hours, <laughs> these are some oh, enjoyability boy. out of it. I you thought we just said we weren't going to do that. <laughs> Stuff happens, and you can sit back and, as long as you don't think too hard about it, it's it's a fun thing to watch, you know. Yeah. But I have to do that every time I watch yeah. a Transformers movie. So why would I want to do that with my X Men? No, 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 no. I said numb your brain, not shut it off completely forever. <laughs> ah. <laughs> hey, I, I enjoy watching the first Transformers. I have fun with it. That first one is like it's borderline. Like it could be, you know. Give me several whiskeys and we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, number two is uh, oh. I think I would need heroin or something. I don't know. I've never done it. So <laughs> What's I, it? I don't only know what falling from the feet of prime. To 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 find prime enjoyability and... out of that. I don't know. I've never been there before. That's that's boldly going somewhere I don't want to go. Hmm. Oh, God. But We're not I mean, talk. X Men Last Stand. It could have been okay, but I, they just screwed the Phoenix Saga up so much from the fact that they just put. The most interesting character that you just teased about, and the most important saga in the entire X Men history, of where you take one of your main characters and show the drastic change of character in her, the drastic character development, and watch her destroy an entire civilization and the effects of it afterwards. I mean, they have to go on stage on this movie, what is fun? But and you're gonna get her to just sit in the background. You're crazy, but you're super powerful at the end. We're gonna put all our CD out there, and then Wolverine will kill you. And then afterwards, after Wolverine kills her, he just walks outside of the mansion, smile on his face, puts his hand on his head, and said, we did it. Go <laughs> us. Yeah. There's, there's really nothing more. I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> Way to go, X-Men. Not the last thing. <laughs> like, I don't Which want to be depressed for the rest of the They killed everybody movie. off like that because I, I, it was the last stand. I, did they think they weren't going to make any more movies? Did they not realize that everyone else is making more more comic movies? Okay, so I just I just had a realization. I feel like an idiot for, for not coming to this realization. What's that? But uh, I know I know of another storyline that they could do after Age of Apocalypse. If All they right. wanted to, uh, they could legitimately do the Phoenix Saga. I would be a down for that. Well, like the they thing, could, though, okay, they could do it right. Let's talk about unless anybody wants to talk about the Last Stand. We'll we'll move on to Apocalypse in the future. Mm-hmm. Any other comments on Last Stand? No, oh, it's in the grave. All right, let's just leave it yeah. there. Is is has the dead horse been beaten enough? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, dead horse beaten. Moving on. Everyone knows if you stayed through the credits, the next movie is X Men Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping you realize that that's who that was at the end of the movie because I had to explain it to no. a few people. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, apparently no. a lot of people didn't. So I heard someone say Mister Sinister, and I wanted from my popcorn down two aisles. I'm like, like what? <laughs> Look, Mr. Sinister is gray, but he's got black lips, not blue lips, and he was from 18th century England, not who knows what century Egypt. I know. But yeah. D- yeah, it's just... Uh. It was clearly Apocalypse. There's really no other... They did put four horsemen over his shoulder for that one exact yeah. reason. Yeah, I didn't even catch that the first time I watched it. When someone told me that, I had to go back and see it when the uh, second viewing. I think I put it on Facebook. And... Yeah. 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 He's got so, four horsemen over his shoulders. The next movie, X Men Apocalypse. What did everybody want in this movie? Like, what what are you hoping happens in Apocalypse? 
I want to see the X Men get the ever loving crap kicked out of them again by Brett Ratner, and and not just and I, Apocalypse is the kind of villain of when he shows up, every single faction that has been exposed up to that point realizes that it's time to work together. Uh, and one of the things I want to see happen in the next movie is for Wolverine and Stryker to work together. Ooh, I have a different opinion on that. Now, I'm with you on I want everyone to work together on this one. I would like to see a... The, 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 so far, everything I've been saying is that it's going to be like a Ronald Emmerich-level disaster film. About As this, it this, should be. This is going to be the scope and scale of it. It's going to be Apocalypse rising, trying to make the humans... Uh, Force humans into extinction, cause the evolutionary chain again, as the Celestials deemed him to be the master of, of you know, survival of the fittest is his manifesto. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Okay, so going back to Days of Future Past, X Men is in the hands of Mystique Striker, and you never see if he has metal claws at the end of the movie in the the good future. You don't see his claws. You don't know if he has the metal claws or not. Nope. Uh. Now, what I'm ha- hoping happens in this next movie, in Apocalypse, is you don't see Wolverine at all throughout the majority of the film. Um, and I'm hoping the cast rolls around. You know, he's threw those names out there. Storm, Gene, Cyclops. I'd love it if they started working on those characters, developing those characters, surrounding it around them. They work alongside Beast. There's talk of Shannon Tatum as Gambit. It's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm hoping that Nightcrawler comes in, because Brian Singer said back and forth, maybe Nightcrawler, maybe not. So I'm hoping the cast revolves around all those characters, Storm, Gene, Cyclops, Gambit, Nightcrawler, Beast. And then, so they're taking on Apocalypse and his four horsemen. And then one of the four horsemen is Wolverine, and he has his metal claws. And that's where you get the metal claws from, was from Apocalypse. Because in the, in the comics, Magneto rips the metal off of him, and that's when you find out he has bone claws. And it's actually Apocalypse who gives it back to him. And since uh, this future's changed already a little bit, and we don't know what's going on with Striker and Mystique. I'm hoping it's Apocalypse who gives him the uh, the claws. And that way you can put Wolverine in the movie, but barely. So that way you have a chance for everyone else to be in the movie. That's actually that, a pretty good idea. That's that would yeah, that would be amazing. I, I kinda I, I cried a little bit from the, the sheer joy of that idea. And so, sort of they, they no, built wait. Wolverine up so much throughout all these franchises that to see suddenly a Wolverine as a bad guy, even in the, and even, and even more terrifyingly as a minion of the big bad boss Mm -hmm. would add such a level of terror for the audience. When you've got young Cyclops and, and young storm who have to deal with, with a mind controlled evil Wolverine. Yep. That sounds awesome. Because up to this point, I don't think Wolverine actually remembers anything from Days of Future Past. Like, Correct. Because that one chance whenever he did wake up a little bit and it was the whole bad acid joke, he doesn't have any memory of these people being around him because it's the future Wolverine's mind in him. So whenever he wakes up and sees Mystique, I don't think he has any memory of being with these people. So Correct. he's going to still yeah. go off on his own path. And hopefully that's going to end up, you know, you see the X-Men develop... Xavier gets his new class. Cyclops finally may get some characterization, some screen time. They'll start on Jean Grey, start on uh, Storm. You have your new class. We can start character development with them, have a good story. And all of a sudden, at the end, you know, somebody takes a mask off, and boom, it's Wolverine. It's Hugh Jackman. And that's where he gets the yeah. claws. Yeah, that'd so, be awesome. So I guess the question is, what's the time period for this one going to be set in? The rumor is 80. Uh yeah, I hear the 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 year I keep hearing is nineteen eighty four. So set eleven years after the events of of uh, Days of Future Past. Because that would give Xavier enough time to have found a. Because I'm just thinking about your your current roster right now. Is pretty small. You got until beast. until, like, until he actually just, goes and and yeah. you got beast. Yeah, until he actually yeah. goes and gathers them together, he doesn't really have anybody. So he can't spend. Uh, a majority of the time in Apocalypse getting all of them together because I would assume the stuff's going to move fast when Apocalypse actually starts whatever he's going to do in uh, Age of Apocalypse. Well, sort of the, the, 
the beautiful thing about uh, a disaster level event like somebody like Apocalypse would cause is that you can legitimately pick up characters as Xavier sort of goes into full blown damage control mode to try to stop this. He sort of uh, either picks up random characters along the way, or he just suddenly like he has, he's had Cyclops and storm and Jean gray for, for five or six years. Yeah. And sort of, we get to spend time with them. And then he sort of picks up random people along the way. Because I sincerely doubt Gambit's going to be a student at the, <laughs> at the uh, Xavier School. He'll pick up yeah. Gambit along the way. Yeah. And possibly yeah. Nightcrawler, I'm hoping. Uh, I could see Nightcrawler going either way. I could see him being a student, and I could see him being somebody who gets picked up. Yeah. Obviously, Gambit will be picked up along the way. Um, what Magneto is going to do in this movie? I don't know. I don't know what Magneto's going to do in this movie. I mean, obviously, well, and and here could be a very interesting and disturbing thought, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure any of us have had it yet. Is if Apocalypse shows up as a mutant, and if this particular Apocalypse is, well, I'm here out to dominate the world and to force the next evolutionary chain of mutants and to rule over it. If suddenly Magneto hears that pitch and he hears somebody who can do that and who can safeguard the mutant race, what happens if Magneto decides to team up with Apocalypse? So Magneto being another one of the horsemen? Either a horseman or just a villain in and of himself who is working for Apocalypse. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I could see it happening. Uh, part of I don't think they would do that because I think they want to keep Magneto somewhat likable. And working for Apocalypse makes just, there's no way you can be likable. Well, there's also, a, you know, a failure of likability whenever you're controlling Sentinels and shooting them at the White House. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, but I understood why he did that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like I agreed with it. I just understood it. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean well, because... uh. He's obviously the first mutant Apocalypse is. He's maybe mm-hmm. not going to be the first one, but that's what Insaba Nur means. It is actually Egyptian for uh, the first one. And it was a title that he was given back in those times, whenever, right before he took over uh, from King Ramatut, which is actually King of the Conqueror. I know I'm going super into depth on the nerd history here. Mm, but, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Apocalypse is the first mutant, and that's why he was gifted the armor that he does not have in that movie so far. He's gifted the armor from the Celestials, who are uh, ancient beings who watch the chain of history uh, evolve throughout time. And that's why he's gifted the armor to be the safeguard of evolution for Earth. He's supposed to watch it, and that's why he's, he already had the survival, of the, uh, the survival of the Fittest Manifesto. And once again, that was another reason for why they continued on saying, you're the first mutant, survival of the fittest, we're down with that, here's the armor. Make sure evolution happens. And then he continues on from that point being the one to always beckon on the chain of evolution. So, he's obviously a mutant in Egypt at that time. He doesn't have his armor. He might get his armor probably from something else yeah. in the movies. And then where he's been throughout time, I'm not sure, but he's ancient as hell. <laughs> if he's going to show up in 1980s. And and sort of that that sort of brings up the next point is obviously Apocalypse was never mentioned or talked about or seen in the original X Men trilogy. So what sort of event has the Days of Future Past changed, which has caused Apocalypse to sort of rise up? Yes, because uh, they said he- uh, in interviews, Brian Singer did that. What you don't know, they don't say it in this movie, is that um the, the change of events from the darkest timeline, as we like to call it to the mm-hmm. timeline, some event in there changed and caused the rise of Apocalypse during this time period. Maybe he's awakened from a slumber, probably that's what it is, but somehow he's, he's arisen from some change of events during Days of Future Past. So, and that, I mean, I figured that's what they were going to do. That would be the logical way to handle that. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how they do it. Um. Yeah, yeah. And you, I'd say the one major thing I want out of that next movie: dorky costumes. 
Oh, oh gosh, no! I know, I know you want that, but I, uh, I just don't know. Look, okay, I'm they took sold. the 1960s costumes of the blue and yellow, and they took away the mask, and they made them work in first class. And instead of doing stupid black and yellow, or black, I mean, sorry, black yet leather, and yeah, I mean, I'm done with the S and M leather, so that's that's yeah. fine. Look but. at the I mean, though. Okay, see, with the exception so of. Costume, with the exception of Magneto, no other character in the days of in the in the Days of Future Past first class X Men have worn really battle outfits, with the exception of the final fight in uh, uh, first class. And even those, were and, like, you know, for some of the forces and yeah, that was a reason, uh, that was a reason behind why they were wearing was for beast for being inside that plane. Yeah. And so, I mean, if with Brian Singer at point and with the direction they've already taken, I, I think they're going to continue the route of either regular clothes or highly functional uniforms. Why can't they have highly functional uniforms that look like dorky comic book costumes? I mean... Has everyone the, seen the alternate ending to The Wolverine? Yeah, I finally saw what you were... No. Yeah. Trevor, have you seen it? No, there's an alternate ending to the Wolverine. Whenever the Wolverine or whenever Wolverine gets on the plane, and he's with, I can't remember what the Asian girl's name. Anyway, he gets on the plane. She gives him a gift, and it's a uh, a suitcase. And he's like, "What's this?" And she says, "It's for you. It's to remind you of who you are, the Wolverine." And he opens it up, and it's the '80s brown and yellow costume, and it looks awesome. <laughs> it looks awesome. But they took it out because. He, uh, whoever directed that one, I think it was James Mangold. Yeah, Mangold. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, he did not want to set something up for Brian Singer to have to follow through with in Days of Future Past as just a costume explaining, like, why isn't Wolverine in the brown and yellow costume? That, that's awfully nice of him. So he took it out. Um, but I mean, that costume looked awesome. And I'm, let's look at the other, uh, series that are going out there Spider Man. He's in his red and blue, normal, dorky-looking comic book costume, and it works. Well, but to be fair, in Spider-Man's defense, he's also a teenager. So teenagers are going to make a more flamboyant, less functional costume. Uh, have you ever seen Elton John? <laughs> well, that's that's I your mean, ace and all. <laughs> I'm just saying. There, there's there's got to be a bet when talking about Elton John. There's got to be a better way of referring to him than Ace in the Hole. Oh God. Anyway. Oh, okay. Fine. Um. My bad. That's anyway. not where I was going with that. Lady Gaga. Okay. Fine. <laughs> I'm not sure that's better. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, how are you? You're comparing. I'm, you're digging here, a hole. Okay, obviously. You're a region. You are, you're a region. You, you were talking like a man who just desperately wants to see flamboyant outfits. I do. I don't like. Okay, look. Spider Man's got the <sighs> outfit. And I'm sorry, but both the Christopher Reeve and the uh, Brandon Ralph outfits for Superman were better than that one in Man of Steel. Um,. Even if the new uh, the new Batman coming out and the one the one picture we've seen so far looks so much more like the comic book interpretation of the uh, costume than any of the previous films, the the one Ben Affleck picture out it looks exactly like it does from Dark Knight Returns. Everyone's going that direction. Avengers, Captain America has got a dorky looking comic book costume. So does Thor. So does Iron Man. Well, I mean, it pretty much looks exactly like it does. Yeah. Anyway, why not? Why can't we have the dorky costumes? Why can't we have the X Factor ones where they're wearing you know giant X's across their bodies? It just depends on the style. Whatever style you've set up for your universe is the one you've got to follow. If you change it and it fits the feel of the universe, then fine. Are you going to sit there and tell me that the eighties weren't flamboyant enough? I mean, neon was everywhere. It's true. I mean, they. I'm not saying they could in bright green neon super short shorts. It's going to happen. Oh, gosh. I mean, that that would probably get more ladies to, to go. Michael Fassbender's a good-looking man. All right. Moving on, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> the 80s were flamboyant as it was. Neon was everywhere. Get some costumes in this movie, please. 
I, I, I will I will disagree with you on this one right. still. Okay, fine. But agreeing with you earlier after Apocalypse, I'd say yes, go all out, fix it, do the Phoenix Saga over again, and oh my yes. god, deliver. I mean, yeah, because yeah, because the Phoenix Saga is the only thing I could honestly see being able oh. to top Apocalypse. Wait a second. Kenny got Kenny has a thought apparently. Can they what, even what do got? a Phoenix Saga? Uh, considering when is Jean Grey going to be born? What do you mean? Well, we the uh, Jean Grey the the events in which they encounter Jean Grey uh, when they do flashbacks in X three were twenty years. When did X three come out? Two thousand and five. Two thousand six. 2006. No, it's, it's so that means that. Okay. No, it's 2006. It, Shut up. You know. Shut up, idiot. <laughs> it's 2006, dude. I'm telling you right now. Because I was a freshman so, in college. I swear it, doesn't I it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't mid, matter. We're nerds. We have to be mid 80s. So, right, so that means that, that Xavier and Magneto encounter Jean Grey in the mid 80s. So they can do Phoenix Saga. Okay. But that also means that Jean Grey probably wouldn't be in uh, Age of Apocalypse because she would be a, a child. Yeah, but once again, we're talking about the very loose continuity of what is the X-Men franchise. Because at this point, when did Wolverine get his memories back? If wait, we're going to bring up continuity of X-Men. Films. Wait, which, which memories? Of which time? All of them. Cause check it. You talking about in Days of Future Past when he woke up? In or are you talking about when Xavier helped him? Or no, when... I'm just talking about in, in yeah, like in general. When did he get his uh, memories back? Because in X Men Two, he's like he walks away from Striker, being like, "I don't need your memories. I don't, I don't need your explanations of who I am." And he doesn't get his memories back. X Men Three, he just continues on being like, "Oh, I'm Logan. No need to remember that I'm I'm James. What is his last name? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway." So Howlett. he doesn't have any memory of his past. Pre James Hallett, thank you. Of uh, he doesn't have any memory of what it was before he had the metal skeleton, and then all of a sudden in the Wolverine he can remember World War Two, and he can remember helping this guy out during uh w- during the bomb of Hiroshima or Nagasaki, one or the other, and then all of a sudden he wakes up in Days of Future Past, back in the past, and he's like, "No, I didn't sleep with her." Well, yeah, I did many a times back in the seventies when he doesn't have his metal skeleton yet, so he hasn't lost his memories. Not or he hadn't lost his memories yet, so at some point they just decided screw it. Wolverine's got his memories back, and then again, if you want to look back at uh, X Men First Class, when Xavier's just walking, you know, going through Cerebro, looking at stuff, there's obviously clearly a kid who is Cyclops in the background, and so he'll be twenty years after that point. So I mean, he'll be like thirty something during X Men Apocalypse, but he probably won't be. He'll probably be like a teenager. Yeah, that. I mean, I, I was I was under the impression that it's going in this incarnation was going to be Cyclops' father. A havoc. Mm-hmm. Quite possibly, it it would make up for the time. I mean, yeah, it would make sense because I doubt they're going to do Corsair and the Space Pirates. <laughs> 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 oh man! I'm sorry, I like the Star Jammers, but they're not doing the Star Jammers. Then again, you could say the same thing about Guardians of the Galaxy. No one ever thought that was going to happen, but it did. Oof. Yeah, well, I, I doubt, I doubt uh, Fox is going to want to do anything in space with the X-Men, simply because... Are they ruined got... enough things in space, like Alien Resurrection? <sighs> Biff. Leave it alone. And Firefly. Just huh. saying. Well, when you listen like that, it's only like two. Yeah, two big ones. Just saying. Anyway. All right. Any other thoughts? Did you have a trip point, Trevor? Did you have a plan? Well, we no, I didn't. I didn't. That's why I said it anyway. I just wanted to move on. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, everyone here loved the Days of Future Past. Absolutely. It yeah. was phenomenal. And if you didn't, obviously, you don't like good movies, and you probably liked White Chicks. Oh boy! <laughs> or you know, Transformers Two or something, something y'all remember that's terrible. 
Hey, so am I the only one who's really excited about uh, Transformers: Age of Extinction? Yes. Oh my god. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, gonna I, lie. I, the trailer. Whenever I saw him riding the dinosaur, yeah, that looked cool. But I'm not going to pay ten dollars to see that movie. I mean, I mean, I thought it looked cool, and it's got Mark Wahlberg in it. I mean, it'll be because Mark be Wahlberg awesome. can do no wrong. The happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> was that his fault or exactly. Shyamalan's? Hey, the happening. I don't care. He was yeah. in it. Well, Max yeah, Payne. Fine. <laughs> He signed on for Max Payne. Oof. Mm. I mean, that's a video game movie. Video game movies are always bad. Exactly. He should have known that. <laughs> Too shitty. But so you got to have a paycheck. You got to have a paycheck. Yeah, well. All right. All right. You want to you wanna, you wanna wrap us up there here, Zach? I guess so. Just to sum up everything tonight, X-Men, Days of Future Past, awesome. X-Men one it was good but it's not so good anymore x-men 2 is still awesome x-men 3 is a piece of crap but you if you're dumb enough and you drink enough you can maybe find <laughs> some enjoyment out of it mm-hmm. and we are all ridiculously excited about watching x-men apocalypse yes we are just remind you my name is nips i'm the man of a thousand opinions my name is trevor law the man who forgets things about himself Forgets things about himself. And I'm Kenny Ship, and apparently my opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It this does. has been well, State of the You can put your opinion in post. You can put your <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forget. I can do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you would ever actually edit the post. Oh, uh, let it go. Let it go, man. Well, Alderaan chunks that's... everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh my god we need to end this before it gets yeah. stupid it's already going there yeah we're next thing you know they're gonna be like next thing you know we're gonna be debating about who's a prime and who can kill who and who cannot kill who because they're not a prime oh okay gosh, well i've been on for an hour and 45 minutes so i'm going to go all right and-